Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, February 10th. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Good to be with you guys here this morning. Bernard, Eileen, Mario, Permendra, good morning to all you guys. Great to see you. So, day one of the two day testimony before Congress with Janet Yellen. Uh, it's often referred to as the Humphrey Hawkins testimony. It's her basically her monetary policy report uh, to Congress. Uh, today's the House Financial Service Committee, I believe, and that starts at 10 o'clock. That's really going to be the main highlight for all the dollar crosses this week heading into Friday, which obviously we get the latest update on uh, advanced retail sales. So pace yourself on the dollar crosses. Again, that starts at 10 o'clock. It's going to be really interesting to see her assessment on the market on the back of not only the spill that we've seen across the equ equity markets across the globe, but also in front of uh, some of the data here that has continued to remain rather strong, right? Really decent numbers on NFPs, and it's so hard for them to really validate or justify keeping rates or holding policy. That being said, the global environment is very difficult for them to raise in. So stuck between a rock and a hard place, and today market participants will be looking and combing through her comments uh, to see if there is a reluctance, if she starts to pad and say we have time, we're not pre-committed, we start to see those interest rate expectations get kicked out further. We looked yesterday at the uh, Fed funds futures rates and we looked at the percentages. Really market participants are not factoring anything substantial of a possibility for an additional rate hike for the next six months. Okay, And we can take a look at that whenever you guys want, but um, as it stands right now, uh, the risk for the dollar at support Looking at that 12,049 level that we talked about yesterday uh, is a confluence level with just basic trendline support and that 38.2 retracement from the ascent off the May lows. So we're checking that. We checked it earlier in the week. The weekly opening range is basically just above that. And a break to the downside, you're looking for the 200-day moving average and confluence support down at the 50. That takes you to 11,000, uh, what is that, 11,997 or 967 rather, I believe. Eleven ninety seven eleven nine seventy, excuse me. Uh, and that'll be the lower median line parallel for this formation, which seems like it's in play right now. It's catching some some reversals. So just to keep this on mind, we were looking at it yesterday on the uh, radar charts here. Here's what we were looking at. We're still eyeing this basic premise. We're looking for a range break between 1249 and 12, 131, 12, uh, 123, this region here. We spiked through it yesterday, but closed well below. You got the 100-day moving average in there. You got the median line parallel. Um, this turns out to be the May high day close, if I'm not, April high day close. So you got a lot up here, a lot down here, and we're looking for a range break to simply clear the range for the US dollar. Ideal scenario is you see another spike high, and then you run to run through the lows. Uh, but certainly as it stands right now, if we do get hawkish commentary or if they continue to say, look, whatever's been going around the globe, it's all transitory, uh, we're gonna be interested to see specifically her, mark, her remarks on the crash that we're seeing in commodities and um, what implications that might have. So long story short, the focus range, 1249, 12.123 for the dollar index. Look for a clearing of that range today. Any questions on the dollar before we move off? Before we get into the other scalps, I do want to talk real quick about gold, dollar at support, gold at resistance. Okay, and this is basically the gold chart we've been following. Remember 11, uh, what is that, 1177, 1176, we broke through that two days ago. We kind of stalled here near the October highs, but a nice slope that... Um, uh, Jamie pointed out to us, we were looking at this pitchfork, right, which didn't give us anything until basically 1242 on the upside. Well, if you take a sliding parallel and connect to the 50, so you're basically splitting this half in half or a quadrant, you can see that that caught the exact highs. Okay, and I know on market scope, guys, it doesn't let you add those percentages in the um, pitchfork. So the easy way to do it, and a little quick hack here, I know this is going to look messy, but just bear with me is if you take a basic retracement and take the 50% of that first quadrant, so right here to that trend line, to the median line. Oh, wrong one. Let 
like so, and just connect the 50 level. Boom, the 50's right there. Extend the parallel off that, and you're right here at resistance. Dollar index at support, something to pay attention to. Now, if we get a downside break, or if we get a pullback here, not really interested in playing a short gold position because we are still in overbought on the daily oscillator. This can stay up here for an indefinite time period, and this is the first time that gold has made it into overbought conditions since, oh, it must have been a couple of years at least, since the highs that we made back in September of 2012, okay? So just a, a, a tell here, ever since we started that major downtrend, momentum has broken sub 40, broken sub 30, broken sub 30, resistance ahead of 60, resistance ahead of 60, you got a 70 tag here, that was the high for that year, it was 2014 high, and here we are again plowing into overbought territory, the highest we've been since that September high. So certainly a reversal in broader momentum. This really invalidates the bearish signature that we've been seeing for the last couple of years of way oversold and resistance at 60. So again, looking for constructive trade here while above 1157, 1156. It's a whole host of former trend line resistance, former upper median line parallel, and that 50% 764 retracement right here. So the possibility for a pullback here in gold, specifically if dollar rallies here, this is where it would be the bullish invalidation level. As long as we stay above this, we should look for those pullbacks to offer some better entries on the long side. So a quick segue before we jump into the currency, I just want to look at that because I think it's very telling where you have the gold at resistance and dollar at support heading into the U.S. session. Okay, if there are no other questions on that, Ricardo, hey, great to see you in the room, sir. Um, we'll jump right into yesterday's scalp report. So, first up on tap, just wanted to review the sterling. It's been a very clean play for us. Yesterday, we were looking at this basic key support that we had run into, the former median lines off the highs. This was a basic 50% retracement of the advance. That came in at 143.73, okay? And we noted that 143.73 is basically the bullish invalidation level at this point. The key range was that 47, uh, or 43, 47, 43.73 um, level into 45.13 was really the major range that we were looking for on the break for the pound. Here's what it looks like now. Okay. So we had come into this key support, nice confluence here. We've adjusted some of the slope lines on the pound too, just to really mimic a little bit better um, or to match better what price action has been doing. You can see that that lower median line parallel has essentially been holding as really nice support. A basic real tight 100% extension off the high gave further credence to that 45.12, 45.05 region, 50% off the high and a 100% just using these legs up here came here. So that was really the, the last threshold. We're maintaining our long side bias. You saw that that top side break not only broke above that channel resistance, but it came back and checked it as support before we moved off. This is very indicative of a check of break of resistance, check of support, move off. So we're looking for long triggers. You can continue favoring those long triggers while above 45.12 at this point. Again, the median line here formation is still very, very clean. And again, sliding parallel, just extending off that high that you made on January 22nd, looks like it caught those two highs last week, almost to the pit. So again, exceptionally clean levels here on the sterling. You just ran into that median line here, so you're getting some kickback. Look for some support right here. Bullish invalidation. We're going to raise that now from the low for the week at that 43.73. We're going to raise that, raise that, excuse me, to right here, 144.44. As long as we stay above that region, we're gonna continue favoring the long side. That was last week's opening range high. 
Nice pivot in price this week, and right now it's a lower median line parallel. Okay, Sterling looking for longs off 145.12 then. So remember the analog that Jamie highlighted as well, Eileen. We're expecting some range-bound opportunities here. I'd rather be on the long side with what's going on in the dollar, um, but I still wouldn't take a scalp on long side necessarily from here. I would love to get a deeper pullback where we can get a little bit more oomph on it. In fact, Eileen, just to put things in perspective to show you where I'm thinking, if we get a hold here and a rebound higher, I'd actually be interested in trying to sell this back up again at 140, uh, just shy of 146, down for another move back to the back to the median line. Um, does that make sense? We're too close to the range high for the week here to try to press the high. If this is a false break of the weekly opening range, Eileen, this thing could come right back into here. So I'd rather, if I'm going to look for longs, if we didn't take it yesterday, we'd look for a position much closer to that median line, or if we break through here, a pullback against this median line would make sense. But from right here, again, if this is a false break for the weekly opening range, it's going to just slam us lower. Uh, she says, yeah, that makes sense. In the, It seems to in the middle of the support resistance, exactly. We're always going to be best trying to hit this from an extreme. Um, so that's what we're looking at with the pound. But yeah, I do like it in, in general. Again, with the daily chart, right? Real clean. Broke through, check it as support. Just like on the intraday, we broke through, check it as support. Even on the broader daily chart, you're doing the same thing. You broke that long standing median line, checked it as support, and move higher. Now, if this, just as a caveat, uh, if we're going to complete a correction here to the downside, then you still have one more low to make before kind of ratcheting higher. Um, but as it stands right now, this is still the key range that we're trading within. So a short's closer to that 46.50 level, Eileen, or if you can get back close to 47.37 or 43.73, I'm dyslexic today, um, would be a better position on this. All right, moving right along. Hold on one sec. I think I just deleted my sterling chart. I'm sorry, guys. Bear with me one moment. Let's see if I can clear up some RAM here. Okay. Uh, uh, we got a question here. It says, well, with the... Well, and with the Yellen reports, could there be many whipsaws? Expect that, Eileen. Guys, expect that today uh, during the uh, Yellen conference, or the testimony, rather. Expect a lot of whipsaw, especially any remarks that she has to do with regards to timing of interest rates. And if she does mention the strength in the dollar, um, that's another thing that would cause some really, I think, some lot more whipsaw, whipsaw action on the, on the pound here. All right, so moving right along. Uh, that was the pound dollar from yesterday. Kiwi dollar is next on tap. I wasn't really sure that this was ready for a, a scalp yet. I highlighted, I highlighted this setup, excuse me, on daily effects yesterday, but I wasn't not too keen. As a disclaimer, I haven't really taken any, any positions on it yet, but here's what we stand with the Kiwi. I think it's kind of panning out to be an interesting trade here near term. So I'm watching 66.77, that confluence resistance, just higher. You have the 200-day moving average that comes in at 66.97, basically just shy of the 70 handle. Uh, the focus range heading into the close of the week is that high, and the basic lower median line parallel we've been holding since those lows from January. I'm looking for a break of this. A downside break is preferred, um, but the bullish invalidation level is pretty clean. I'm not going to keep this the bullish invalidation. I'm going to keep this. I'll tell you why. Um, I keep it up here because if this is going to be a it, one interpretation, could be a one, two, three, four 
which case you would need one more high to sort of validate that wave count before looking lower. At the same time, you have that momentum signature pending since the highs they made in October. So if you see a pop there, you could still reach into 67.60, 67.58 before all is said and done. So this is still going to be the broader bearish invalidation level. But remember, the yearly open isn't until 68.27. So despite all the moves that we've seen, you still haven't even covered that loss that we saw since the start of the year. And we'll keep that bearish invalidation level for the broader trade right here at 67.60. Here's what the Kiwi looks like in the 30 minute. And here's what we looked like last night. Okay, so for Kiwi dollar, the note said, look for a spike higher to sell, weekly opening range set just below or set with Tuesday's candle. So if you guys... Note that the daily chart, basically what you saw yesterday, yesterday's single session is the opening range for the week. Okay, and the 30 minute, that's this stretch right here. That's this stretch right here. So this is essentially the range that we're trying to clear, either above that range or break below to give us the near-term directional bias. Last week, the opening range for the Kiwi was spot on. You opened the week, you tested a new high, you went to the lows, it failed, you broke the highs, and you closed the week. You made a late week high, okay? Really close, so that was on Friday, right ahead of NFPs. So again, we'll be looking for that break to validate. A uh, downside break is favored on account of the broader formation that we're in. Um, but if you do see that top side pop, look for the rally to 200-day moving average. Look for that rally to 67.58, and that's where I'd start to look for a little bit more of a concerted turnover. Uh, the validation for a reversal from the trend we've seen off the January lows is going to be a break below that 65.50 barrier. All right, and a move below that, look for a resumption of the broader downtrend here for Kiwi. Mario, my man says, I'm short from 66.66. Well, you couldn't have gotten a better entry. You kind of top tick that, right? Not bad. All right, so let's just do a quick drill with, your, with you here, Mario, now that you're in that position. Okay, so here's the open of London. Here's the London opening range. Here's the open so far for equity futures here in the United States, 8.30. Just want to highlight one thing on this one-minute chart. And again, this is one minute, right? So it shouldn't necessarily shake out of the trade, but something to pay attention to. You're seeing some ongoing divergence. Price action, new low. The oscillator, a higher low. Something to pay attention to. Let's bring it out into a five-minute real quick. So on a trade like this, I probably would have my stop at break even already. Remember, you're only looking for about 26 pips per scalp. So make sure that we're doing something on that range, Mario. He says, against the London highs. Ideal. Yeah, once we start to push below the opening range or at least this swing low that you made in London, I would start to bring, uh, take a little, the quarter off, 26 pips, and bring that initial stop down to break even. But I like it. I like it. On its face, guys, and this is what I said yesterday, on its, my man, Mario says it's already at break even. Well played, sir. <clears throat> on its face, guys, I just want to keep in, in clear that this is just simply made in weekly opening range. That's it. We're looking for a break to clear that. So if you're like Mario or you're like me, you're real light, you're looking for intraday trades, playing the inside here makes sense. Um, I wouldn't be looking for anything above the extreme or below the lowest of the week until we make that break, at least from a scalping standpoint. Well played, Mario. Any questions, <clears throat> excuse me, any questions on Kiwi Dollar before we move off? And again, relative performance for the U.S. dollar heading into the U.S. session, you can see that uh, Kiwi and Aussie both stronger on the session. Kiwi up 0 0.15, Aussie up 0 0.25, yen with an advance of 0 0.3. And the last thing that we wanted to look at, one of the other things we want to look at is the two yen crosses that we've been following. Certainly dollar yen for me is, I'm not touching it. No interest in dollar yen. I do want to track what dollar yen is doing just to make it a little bit more clear. 
Um, but for me, Aussie and Cadian have been beautiful plays. Let's jump into that and take a quick look. Here's what Cadian looked like last night. Oh, Eileen says scalp trigger is more valid for any pair outside of the times of the testimonies. Yeah, as as opposed to that, Eileen, I would say. Okay, so here's one thing I just want to touch on real quick. When we're looking to get into a scalp for this session, remember just as we talk about the opening ranges. If the market is a trending market, it'll open on one extreme and close on the other. So if the market is in a bullish or is it in a constructive mode, the opening range for whatever period you're looking at, whether it's the daily uh, or hourly uh, opening range, that seems to be at the extreme. So not just during the testimony, Eileen, but where you are in the day. You know, I'm not going to jump into a fresh scalp at you know 12:15 here in New York. It's not going to be the ample time, the best time for us to do it. Because remember. Markets tend to push the extremes on the open. So uh, Yellen starts at 10. Sure, you got an hour to go. If you get a decent short signal or if this thing comes back towards the highs, no problem with that. But just something to be mindful of. Um, CAD yen, which is what we were looking at last night, looked like this. And again, just a very simple trade. This was highlighted on the radar chart on Sunday, if you guys remember. this, Just a basic pitchfork. This is the simplest setup. Um, right now that I'm tracking at least. Here's CAD Yen on the daily. Just to put things in perspective, really nothing fancy about this chart, just basic, simple median line analysis. Okay, and a very good uh, sort of confirmation to help you with your conviction if you've got the right slope, or are these sliding parallels indeed catching price? And you can see, obviously, the same slope has offered some very clean pivots in price. Caught that high early in February, Sliding parallel of the same slope caught the lows from August and the lows we just made last month. Okay, you've had five down days in a row into the key 618 retracement. Okay, dollar yen, that was that support as well. Here's what it looks like on the intraday charts. So the risk is, or the, the basic premise was, the downside risk is at risk above 82 meaning 82 is likely to find a little bit of a bounce here and CAD yen on the 30 minute looks like this. Okay, super clean, super clean. We're still holding within the confines of this move. Now, yesterday was a long opportunity. I do want to point that out, Eileen. This is sort of an ideal thing. So aside from the, the triggers that we look for in price and price being at a critical level, uh, the time of day. So here you look, we published this, what time was this? About 10.30 last night. The opening ranges had already set out for all of all of Asia, and the opening range low was right there at that confluence support of the median line and the key 618, not just any 618, but the entire advance. Okay, not only that, but you also had the opening range low for the week and a swing low here for January. So this huge level 82, sort of big. You had a resistance trigger that gave out early last night, or late last night, into the right ahead of the uh, of the European Open, and here we are into resistance and near-term bearish invalidation at 83. So a break above this, and you'd start to look for a recovery trade, basic trendline resistance off the high. Just want to bring this in real quick, and the 50 percent retracement of the entire decline here puts sort of the resumption trade or to invalidate the broader bias to the downside you'd need to get back above here okay so if we break the top side I'd be more than happy taking long scalps and cad yen it's going to be very dependent on what we're seeing in broader risk assets. I don't want to fight the markets, but if we do see a top side pop, momentum above 60, buy pullbacks towards that upper median line parallel or basic trend line resistance, excuse me, the 50% retracement, that swing low from last week, all line up right here at 84.46. Uh, that being said, we're simply looking for short triggers. The long side was a play for yesterday. The bearish invalidation level held, so we're still bearish. Next target or next sort of trigger would be this and there's room on this guys it's a 42 pip scalp it's a 42 pip ATR is a quarter daily ATR so you have room and a downside break beyond the weekly opening range lows it's 
it's really nothing on tap until 80, 87. Okay, it's more than 100 pips. I know that's 100 pips away. As we get 42 pips in, take some off the table, bring your stops to break even, and see if you can get that final stretch. But a very simple, uh, a very simple setup. And sometimes the best trades, the best, the best scalps that I've gone through, is just the simplest setups. You know, the more complex you make it, um, especially on a near-term bias, you're much more likely to misinterpret something. Um, Eileen says, thanks, that explain helps a lot. Thanks, you're more than welcome, Eileen. Great to have you in the room as always. But just to show you where we want to look for the triggers, because you, you could get triggers at any time of day, but we need to be near an extreme in price, and we need to be near an extreme in time. When I say an extreme in time, I don't ever talk, I don't talk with you guys enough about this, but when I'm jumping into a trade, especially intraday, uh, the best time to jump in is early in the hour, literally. So when we head into the 8.30 market, uh, 9.30 market opens, right? 10 o'clock hour, from 10 to 10.15, 10 to 10.20, somewhere in that range, you'll see a mini range on the one minute chart and a break, just like you do on the weekly opening range, on the monthly opening range. It's the same concept. Market participants are gonna fight, they're gonna test the high, test the low, and then you'll see which one buckles. So heading to the US session, that's sort of the, the major focus. We open US trade. If this thing comes down and gives us a nice tag into this region again, the momentum support holds, might be a nice long for another run into that median line. The bottom line is as long as we're in this formation, should be looking for short exposure. I'm just not gonna short into key support where we're already looking at the weekly low. All right, and that's CAD yen. I know it's a weird pair. <laughs> I don't really talk about it very much. I'm not too crazy about getting long CAD if this does reverse, but um, with the risk off environment, CAD yen trade just tends to work pretty well. Uh, here's what we're looking at, by the way, as far as um, market equity performance. Here's what we look like heading into the US. Okay, Asia was really weird because we opened up dramatically lower um, or we dropped, Nikkei 225 was down 2.3%. Okay, this is the another version, like the S&P 500, Nikkei 400, basically, down 3%. Obviously, Chinese markets are still closed the entire week for the Lunar New Year, but you can see still really heavy trading in um, Asia PAC. ASX 200, this is the Aussie market, still down 1.17%. Now, you came into European trade, and they actually rallied pretty strongly. I see the CAC 40 up 1.9%, DAX, more importantly, up 2%, and a nice rebound in broader risk sentiment ahead of Yellen. Looking at equity futures for the U.S., they're poised to open higher as well. Dow Jones looks to open higher by about 84 points, about 13 handles on the S&P. So... The reason I bring this up is because if risk turns around, if Yellen says something to really hurt risk, a break below this or a sell-off in risk would certainly be a nice play here in CAD yen, I think, to the downside. CAD weakness on account of energy prices, broader risk, pushing away yen strength on that risk trade. So the better CAD yen short would have been around 7 a.m. or 7.15. You talking about today? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Eileen. Here, let's look at this. Yeah, you didn't have much of a trigger here though. That would have been an ideal entry. I'm just trying to see if we would have had a trigger in there. Uh, it's not, but it might be not so bad. I would have been looking at something like this. Sure. Especially on the back of divergence, 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 higher high, higher high, lower high, lower high, trigger break. Looking for 40 pips. Yeah, it's going to happen. No worries, Eileen. We'll, we'll catch them. We'll catch The market always provides. Sometimes, you know, a lot of times when you're looking at a trade and you're waiting for the entry and you just miss it, it gets very frustrating. But I still track the trade, even if I'm not in it, just to see, was our mindset in the right place? Am I thinking in the right direction right now? Uh, or am I way off? So either way, we'll see if we can't get a settlement again near 82, topside breach, look for that rally towards 84.50. 
All right, so those are the uh, three setups that we highlighted on yesterday's intraday um, report. Let me know if there are any other questions on this. If not, we'll go ahead and jump into the radar charts from last night real quick. We talked about the U.S. dollar, Euro dollar, and Aussie yen are another two pair that I was very interested in. Uh, I want to cover Aussie yen first since we've, we're sort of on the yen. Here's what the yen looks like versus the Aussie, right? And the basic trade here was key support into the 80 handle, basically. The key range in focus was 81.50 into the 80 handle right here with a top side sort of risk seeing a rally back into 81.96. And what we said in the report was, look, the shorts are at risk while above this region. We could see a rebound. To validate a near-term reversal, we would need to get above 82. But near-term from last night, divergence, lower low in price, higher low in the oscillator. You had a trigger break here. I didn't want to draw it because it's too messy already. It was late. But that gave you a nice scalp. We came back, tagged it support, and moved higher. Here's what, uh, here's what Aussie N looks like now. Okay. So we came into that 81.50 first target. You saw a nice parallel there, break. And here we are testing major key resistance. The high was just shy of it, guys. Like literally, the high was 81.86. This starts at 81.87 into 81.94. Big range, nice pivot in price as well. I'm going to zoom this out just for a moment to show you one quick little neat thing. Okay, so former channel support, very, very basic. Trendline resistance, if you mirror that to support, look at that. Resistance, breakthrough, breakthrough resistance again and it happens to fall on the 100% extension off the high a 618 off the low confluence with that region okay your barrier of entry here and the near term bearish invalidation level is 8187 to 8195 okay um, Eileen says for Aussie yen why were you looking higher rather than shorts um, I noted it right here, Eileen, because we came and we reversed very sharply off of a major, major resistance confluence or support confluence near term, right? So the near term bias, as you came into the lows here, you had divergence, you reacted to a major uh, or significant support, obviously you look for a rebound there, right? And we were only looking for the rebound, which is what I'm saying to you right now. This is the near term bearish invalidation. So now we came into this region. If we have a short trigger that gives out from here, right back on the short side again, right? Guys, we have to keep in mind that when we're intraday trading, we're not married to any bias. We can switch the bias like that, which is why, again, we, it's, a, it's a strategy where you have to stay nimble on your toes. Yeah, the broader trade is bearish, Eileen. It's my trade of the year, actually. I published on Daily FX for 2016. I think Aussie has got tons to go. But my strategy, or what we're doing now, allows us to take positions against that near-term against the longer term directional bias. Here's what Aussie N looks like on the daily, just to put things in perspective. And again, again on the back of the major decline that we just saw, you saw four days, uh, don't count that, but three days of significant declines. And you saw a nice support bounce at key support. Right here, 1618 off the high, 79.91. 88.6 off the low and basic slope. So even though we're bearish and the broader term is still bearish, the bounce from here with that divergence shift to the focus higher, you're still bearish sub 82 at this point. Make sense? So the long was counter trend. Oh, okay. And I see where that bounce was right on. All right. Cheers. Good questions. Great questions today, guys. So that is Aussie Yen. I'll continue to pair or continue to watch this one. I was kicking myself last night. There was a beautiful trigger right here. You literally could have jumped in with a 15 pip stop and you would have gotten the 40 pips that we're looking for. Um, but I was writing the, the piece for, for SB, so I missed that. In any event, um, the ranges are pretty healthy here. Nice 45 pips per scalp. So use that to your advantage, guys. Hmm. 
And again, some minor, minor divergence into the highs here. We're only looking at the close. Yep, higher high, lower high. Not the most convincing thing, but price is at resistance. So if we get another recovery of this range and a short off that might be nice. If it breaks this and continues, we're not going to go chasing, but would certainly validate and further reaffirm that key range between 82 and the 80 handle. Any other questions on Aussie N? All right. So last but not least, let's jump into the Euro crosses and some of those periods that we've been following over the last few days. Uh, Euro key also. Uh, here's what Euro dollar looks like heading into U.S. trade. So again, keeping in mind what the dollar index is doing. I'm just going to tag on this one more time. And I just want to show you WIRP, um, the futures implied probability. Here we are again. Okay. So again, the probability that we're going to be at zero or at a quarter to 50 basis points, which is where we are now, pretty much 96% still for next month. Uh, only 4% chance of a hike of 25 basis points. The month out beyond that, that's dropped to only 7%. Okay, the most significant or the where it starts to become a little bit more significant is basically September into, um, you know, November, where you start to see a little bit more of a 26, 28 percent chance for a hike. So this is all changing, guys, every day because you continue to see, you know, expectations that the Fed might follow through with what they said of expectations for four hikes this year. It doesn't look like market participants are factoring in what. Yellen is essentially saying is the expectation. Okay, so heading into her comments, we see that the market is already has already pushed out those interest rate expectations basically out into Q3, if not Q4. Okay, so I just want to put that in perspective. Now, looking at the euro dollar, noting that the dollar index is at support or is at least reacting to it right now, shouldn't be surprised to see your euro dollar do this. Okay. Coming right off of that resistance. This is another trade. I was actually talking over this with um, Jamie a while last night. Um, a slight adjustment to our pitch or the slope. If you recall yesterday, we were using this high, which to me is typically the first high I'll go for. And while it caught these two lows with precision, if you take it out and kick it out that high to the May for Euro, some interesting things happen. Some sliding parallels here caught the two lows that you made both in August and late last year, November, December. And that same slope also turns out to be the highs that you made there in October and a nice pivot. We broke through, checking as support right now. Okay, so that's why I don't want to get too, too crazy on the bearer side yet. You know where the bullish invalidation level is, very, very clear. It's basically going to be the highs that we just made in Asia, that median line parallel. So you're looking at basically the 113 handle, or excuse me, the bearish invalidation. We'd be looking higher for that. Okay, and here's what we looked like yesterday. Questions on the euro? All right. Okay. So, um, those are the latest setups. Your comments on Euro Oz, I'm taking I'm taking along as we tested the 38.25 from February. Can you also give the update in the invalidation level? Sure can. Sure can. Uh, for the Euro, can you drill down in uh, drill down into forward thinking with it? Sure. So moving into the US session. So Mary, before I jump into Euro Oz, let's just take a five minute chart real quick and see what's going on here with the Euro dollar. 
by the way, I don't know if you guys remember, but yesterday when we were talking on that scalp, I think it was Aussie N. Um, I think it was one of you guys who brought it up and said, hey, is this um, a, a viable long trigger? It actually was a beautiful entry. Um, after the, the webinar closed, like an hour later, you quickly attained that 40 pip ATR and it was a beautiful, beautiful trade. So, um, guys, I go on through these webinars. I'm in my mode of kind of trying to break down what the markets are doing. If you see these triggers give out, don't feel free. Feel free to either drop, drop it in the message board or at least take it yourself. Um, I'd hate to think that we're missing opportunities just because um, – or just because we're not paying attention. So, uh, with the euro Oz or with the euro dollar, rather, moving forward into U.S. trade, Okay, so I'm not going to be able to draw this trend line here, right, because this goes back all the way to the high. So I'm keeping in mind basically the low that you made right here and the ongoing divergence you're seeing on the one minute. Uh, be this newer low would be from here. And here's one to the upside. Okay, I'll tell you something, Eileen. I wouldn't be interested in taking this long. Why? Well, because very simple, the resistance is just there. So if I'm not going to be able to squeeze out 28 pips before I jump into a major resistance region again, I'm not really going to be interested in it um, at this point. I would wait on the euro dollar exposure at all until we head into um, Yellen. Euro is probably going to get the biggest swing, especially if markets run higher. Okay? If equity let, – let's take a step back. If she comes back all hawkish and says, guys, we're still on course – Everything that you're seeing in Asia is transitory. The drop and plummet we're seeing in, in equity price, in um, commodity prices is, is transitory. She comes out with a really upbeat scenario, uh, and the market rallies. Uh, that's going to be a very, very good indicator for the euro moving higher. Not only on risk, okay, but also because if she's very constructive, that means the economy is working on a good footing, right? And that means that with everything that's going on. You could see the euro catch that bid and break through that major resistance. I just want to show you that daily chart. Okay. Again, we adjusted this the same thing, right? If you take that from the high from June, stretch it out to the high from May, same slope for that decline you had off the December, uh, January highs, and the upper median line parallel looks like it just caught this exactly, specifically, and more so on a closed basis. Right? Doesn't get doesn't get much cleaner than that. And she says, Oh, because the resistance is right there higher. Yep, exactly. So I don't want to take a long right into this. If we had broken through this, Eileen, and the pullback was coming into this as support again, that would have been beautiful. Because if it breaks below, well then you know very well that the break was a false one. But to try to press along from here is gonna be a, is gonna be a difficult task. And Dave says, there's the target on Kiwi. Oops. Yeah, you got your first 26 pips on it, right? Not bad. Not bad. Watch that. This is important, not because only it's the 50% retracement, guys. That's not only it. It's also the weekly open. The actual concerted weekly open comes in at 66.19. So this area in general, 66.19 into 66.14, is sort of what I'm looking for on this drop. For some reason, every time I talk, Siri thinks I'm calling her. <laughs> um, yes, my short brought home the bacon. Well done, Mario. Keep it up, my friend. <laughs> you guys can hear Siri too. Sorry about that. All right. So Euro Oz here for Eileen. Let's take a look. Or uh, I'm sorry, this was for Mario. Let's take a look at Euro Oz real quick. Okay, here's the daily. So, 
Um, let's see. The bullish bias. When's the last time we covered your odds? Just want to see. We were constructive into that region. I'm not sure if we had an update after that. The latest update on Euro Oz was right here. No, oh, oops, down here. Okay, so here's what Euro Oz looked like on the uh, second of the month. We were coming off of this major key support barrier right here. Okay, the top side break of this formation initially shifted the focus to the upside. Here's what Euro Oz looks like now on the intraday. And this was from the second, from right here. So we came back, tested that again as support, moved off. The same slope is in play. You can see that the, the upper median line parallel literally caught that stretch that we made yesterday, almost to the pip here, uh, before coming off. So we're now testing support. Like I said in the report yesterday, guys, this, or in the uh, radar chart, this is going to be the near-term sort of level that we need to break to get back on the short side for Kiwi, uh, or for Euro Oz, rather. Um, but long story short, that pullback is to be bought. So from here... A break below this key threshold will invalidate the immediate upside bias, but we'd be looking for that drop to offer, again, some better long exposure. So I'm not too against taking a short off here. If you see an opening range break to the downside, your initial targets would be 56.60. A quick you know, run through, if we do get that scenario where we break below this near-term key support, a basic retracement should serve us well off the low for the month. This is actually the January low. Okay, and if we draw that properly, look what we just hit, 38.2 retracement. 50% comes in here at 56, 57 basically, let's say, and the key 618, 55.90, that would be sort of an ideal uh, buy opportunity. I don't know if we'll get down there. The weekly opening range low is pretty much with that 56.60 level, uh, but you get the picture. Okay, and I think the long side's at risk while below this median line, so I'm not really looking for long triggers unless we clear back above that uh, in U.S. trade today. Any questions on Euro Oz? Mary, does that help? Does that make sense? Mary says he's long from 58.54. Wait, what? You're long from 158.54, right? I think you got, had a little typo there. 54. Okay. Yeah, so for the long side on this, Mario, just real quick. I just want to go over with you quick with you because the risk is definitely, in my opinion, a break to the downside is a risk here because you're seeing momentum breaking 40 for the first time in two weeks from overbought condition. The last time you saw a break uh, sub 40 from overbought, nice drill to have, is here. Overbought, overbought. Uh, the break into oversold would still have to be here. So if this is a peaking process, you could see another rally actually towards the highs. Interesting. And this is getting pretty granular, guys, but I just want to take a look at something real quick. Okay. And I just want to see what the, is the high day close here? Okay, the high day close comes in at 59.68. 59.68, that's the 50% retracement, 59.75, close enough. Okay, just gonna highlight those for now. Really near term, the thirty, the two, three, six is causing is offering some basic resistance. I'm also looking at that median line there, but um, this is the range in focus as you head into the open of U.S. trade, Mario. Uh, I like the fact that you that you're basically taking this on the upswing. Watch this trigger. 
okay? If that trigger holds on the momentum swing to the upside and price holds below basically 55, 85 where we are right now, uh, I probably want to want to bail out when the next candle opens. Um, if this kind of plows through, maybe you want to take something off the table here, uh, Mario, bring your subs to break even and see if you get the extended high. The more important resistance range, let's call it, it's still going to be the 50 because that lines up really well with the high day close for the month. Make sense? He says, yes, thank you, thank you. Hey, more than welcome, more than welcome. Let me take a look at the five minute, actually. Let's see if we can get a trigger on this. Where's your OAS? So in fact, you might actually want to look at this as well. For sort of an indication when, if you would like to bail or take some off the table uh, on the one minute. Again, this is a really tight time frame, but just to show you kind of what I'd be looking at if I was trying to take a short against that initial resistance. All right, any other questions on Euro Oz before we move off from there? Did we talk about dollar CAD? We did not. Here's what dollar CAD looks like, real quick before we wrap up. So, trade remains the same, haven't changed. Yesterday we talked about the possibility that this breach here, we'll come back, check it as support before we move off. It looks like we're doing that now. The barrier, the last thing that you need to kind of get through here to give you the validation for a, for a little bit more of a kick higher is going to be uh, a move through this high day close for December. Uh, that came in specifically on December 18th. That came in at a level at, uh, what was it, 39.57, I believe. Yeah, 39.57. Okay. Interestingly enough, the opening range high for the week is basically right there. So really, really clean ranges. This 38.11 is the monthly open, the 2016 open, excuse me, the January monthly open. And this, like I said, is the high day close. We've been sitting in this tight range for the last three days. What high day closes are important? Monthly and the year to date? Um, yeah. Um, what do I say to that? It's any extreme, Eileen. It's either a monthly high it's an, I don't want to put it on a monthly basis, though, because this low high day close is not more significant than this one. You know what I mean? It's the extremes. You got that? Does that make sense? So what's the highest point? If this pullback was the latest, the most recent highest point in price, that was the, that was the high day close. Once we broke this, we came down. What's the most highest, what's the high day point, or what's the high point for this advance? Well, this, the high day close is actually right here. So on the way up, this would be resistance. Just so happens that the previous, this one's significant because it's the yearly high day close, which adds more credence to it. But not only that, it's also the February open. Okay, the February open came in at, uh, February open came in at 139.66, 139.57, close enough. Make sense? So here's what dollar cat looks like on the near-term chart, just to put things in perspective. On its face value, again, all it's made is a simple weekly opening range just below that 2015 high day close we talked about, 39.57. And this is really the break that we need to get the recovery. This is a long-standing you know, channel we've been in. These are just median lines. That's all it is. Just took resistance, mirrored it down. You can see we've been seeing really nice pivots here. You can see that this one doesn't really do much, but you did get a two-point touch. A basic trend line extending off of this high, this I believe is the one that uh, Jamie's looking at, has resistance all along the highs that we made today. Here we are attempting to make a breach. For me, 39.57 is what would validate a near term turn here in the dollar CAD. So again, base case scenario, maybe see Yellen come out, 
everything's rosy. We're moving on rates. No, no change. You know, we're going to see the four rate hikes that we thought we were going to see. Dollar rallies. See a rip right through this. That would offer a better opportunity to get back on the short side. Don't think we're done. Don't think we're done. But near term, a breach above this would certainly shift the focus uh, to a basic retracement if that happens, guys, off the high. So this is the retracement we're looking at here, if that breaks. And a basic 38.2 is 140.40. More importantly, you have the high from last week at 41. And the 50 of the entire decline off the highs. And remember, this basically encompasses all of 2015 trade. Uh, excuse me, all of 2016 trade uh, of basic 50 off the high gets into 41.63. All right. Let me just snap this for you real quick. Okay. Short-term dollar cad is ripening for a short scalp as well, says Dave. Uh, be careful here. Be careful here with Ye – Yellen's going to be talking in half an hour here, Dave. So I wouldn't want to necessarily try to short the dollar right here if you're not already in it. But, yes, I do agree with you that if it does rally to a to a degree here near 140, 40, 41.60 is a really interesting level. Yeah, I think it would be a nice opportunity to get back on the short side. Let's see if we can get a tag of that. 200-day moving average, or the 100-day moving average, excuse me, is all the way down at 35, uh, 70, essentially, right with that 618. Okay, so those are all the setups I'm currently following, uh, just in case they weren't enough. If you have any other questions or trade setups you want to review, guys, please feel free to throw them out now. Otherwise, do keep in mind that we will have Mr. Jamie Setley, my good friend, coming on uh, for his midweek strategy webinar today at 1 p.m. Eastern. So make sure uh, you have make time for that in your schedule. And again, 10 o'clock starts the Humphrey, Humphrey Hawkins testimony with Yellen, semi-annual testimony before uh, the Senate. Um, and don't forget that it's a two-day uh, affair. So we will have today's uh, session, which will run a few hours after 10, and then tomorrow again. Today's usually the first day is usually the one where you get the most the most uh, volatility because that's where you first get the gauge of is she in a, in a really stance where she's trying to pad the market for the next hike or is she taking a step back saying, guys, don't worry, we're not going to tighten anymore right now. Things you know don't seem so stable. So it's really going to be on her tone and on any type of expectation or, or consideration of the dollar strength that we've been seeing. Remember, the Fed's dual mandate of the dual mandate, inflation is still the laggard. We did see inflation numbers pick up last week, but the broader inflationary story seems to be a disinflation across the globe. Okay, So a stronger dollar is only going to further exacerbate that problem they're trying to stoke inflation. So uh, look for those comments starting 10 o'clock. We'll give you updates on the SB Squawk line. Till then, guys, best of luck trading, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.